Here she is, 2004 Mickelson, 61 Pilot House. There's the bait tanks, the cockpit, we have it all covered. And the large hole has been cut. Center lines, obviously preferred. The weight of 2,800 pounds. Step one was to take out the fighting chair and the plates underneath and the deck support under there and then move the batteries now they're over there. And it'll sit between the stringers, you have to be built up, cut down. That looks like just far enough back that we could put the um, deck support where the fighting chair was because it was just yeah we yeah we'll have that. to this will all get well you know we might be able to move you know this this will we're gonna have to raise the stringer up about seven inches oh I see so, redo the support so then we could shorten the support and still use this as a support if we want to or we might even look at doing something like putting a cross piece Oh yeah, it, you know, because it's gonna be. We're gonna have to figure that out. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you don't do the fiberglass. Piece. We've got our three inches, which I'll go with. You know, remember we measured that from the fuel you measured. I I looked at it, so we'll call that three inches. We have six and a half inches of raw foam with no layup on it. By the time we're done laying it up, it's gonna add another half an inch. Then we're gonna glue. We're gonna glue a half inch aluminum plate. And a one, and you know, or we're, and then we're, you know, we're gonna be welding, so we're gonna net out another inch and a half. We can't just put like an inch and a half, and not have to weld it. Just well, we're gonna make a saddle. We're gonna make something. To see the the, and that's talking to Tom, my application engineer. See, I'm just trying to eliminate the welding because I don't know if you'll. I know. I don't. Well, whichever. Well, we, we I've so. Once I measured all this and I ran it by him, he was like, well, you know, there's, at any given point, we've got loads, we got loads, multiple load directions of 3,000 plus pounds, potentially. So we really gotta be, we really gotta be on top of this. Wow. So we want, so we want to have, and the problem is we're not, we don't, if our stringer was inside and on the fuel tank, you know, if the stringer was directly under this, I'd have no problems, but we're, we're, we're transferring that load from, we want to get to the boat and the load starting over here and we yeah. need to safely transfer that load to the, okay. and you know, they're worried about, so, so what, let me draw another, I'll draw you a quick sketch. Well, they're making progress. They're smoothing it out. It's been attached to the rudder shell. The stringer's been widened. The forward section just ends. You just have to make the 
Do we have to the make harness the, the saddles? That go over? Saddles. But they need a one eighth. Yeah, like these. This is perfect. This gets narrow. Get the combination. A one eighth gap, which like between the edges and the fiberglass, you mean? Yeah. But aren't you custom making the saddles? Yes. Hey, wait. There's two boxes over there. So those those holes have to be bigger? The glue holes. Just the which holes? The glue holes on the side of the head. Oh the glue holes. Yeah. Oh for the That's so the epoxy soaks in or goes through it. Okay. Oh Carlos. Oh okay. I just want to make sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'll, I'll film this. Okay, um, all right, let me uh, see when I have time. I'm not sure this video at all, I'm not sure, okay? Probably soon I have time, I'll let you know. Maybe it run. Was that Rob? Yeah, hi. Got it. Look at that cunt. Fuck me. Will we make it? Looks like it. Yeah. Here's the roof. Looks like it. So there's like a bulge. The other side dips down. Yeah, I could touch it. Be careful, this side looks like it goes lower. Just now? Yeah, these I got the other day, but I thought they were still too. Hi, how you doing? Hey, I need uh, another. I thought I ordered 32 of those. Um, what are those funny washers called? Um, the, the lock? Yeah, yeah, I need another. I, I need a 32 total, so I need. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4. I need another 16. So I guess another, another 10 pack. What do you call it? 10 pairs? One pack. Correct, but they come in packs of packs of ten. So just give me another two of those packs. Thanks. It looks like a nuclear bomb.
20,000 megaton yield. It's a heavy duty. Shut it off right away. Okay. 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 All right. I should look at the side of the boat, not the. Well, yeah. yeah. All right. So we're gonna verify water flow. We had a boat down in Newport Beach, and the skipper had it, and he goes, "Oh yeah, just take it. I'll get another one." Great. That's Still, it's cool. Mr. Crow, the owner of the boat. <laughs> All right. So we didn't get water flow. So we're gonna. Make sure the pump's wired forward, because it, it could go clockwise or counterclockwise. We have, it's below water line, we get water coming out the thing. We think. Growth. He said we're nah. not. That's a direct shot? Yeah. Nah. It's running backwards. It'll suck water, it'll do it backwards. It'll, it'll run, it'll cycle water the opposite way. Really? Secret key. The motor is a separate component from the pump head. Yeah, yeah. So the motor is designed to run in two different directions, counterclockwise or clockwise. Because it has, The pump is right. set up, you know, that the way the pump is set up. So what we're, we're going to, we're going to rewire it for, uh, uh, clockwise because we have it as CCW right now so that involves changing well you just gotta switch the jumpers yeah that's it I think isn't it yeah they just go um yeah kind of the opposite way rotated 90 degrees but well, it's, it shows it in the lid yeah, you gotta pull one Z1 and Z1 has to come off Okay, so we thought it was counterclockwise, now we think well, it's clockwise. We think. We're gonna find out. Yeah. Yep, I need a pair of pliers. Be nice. Yeah, if your boat's sinking, you don't have time to go look for stuff. So we came out there with power and the control mm -hmm. cable, and then we go. Routed it up across the ceiling and all the way up to the helm to our 24 volt power supply.
I'm going to test the pump. See if it puts out more water if it's going clockwise instead of counterclockwise. Am I checking the overflow over the side? I'll check it, plus I can see this valve right here. I mean, meter. Three point seven eight gallons per minute. It's definitely more flow. That's six point four four. <laughs> Good job, boys. So this pump, you got to go with the wiring for clockwise, not counterclockwise, even though we call it an ass. Dude, I don't know which side is which. Just go with the clockwise. Just, it's just the bearings getting seated up. So if that noise was solid, like went on and on and on, then we, we look at it as different. Yeah, but it's, this is just real random noise it's coming and going. You might hear it when it's spooling up. Like I'm guessing right now, we're probably at about 1500 RPM. And um, you might hear it on the way up. And you also, it becomes more, more, sometimes more prevalent on the way down when the gyro's off and there's no power going to it. It's nothing, there's no spinning motion. And it's just free falling. Um, the bearings start loosening up because there's no load on them. There's absolutely no load, and then you'll hear it. You'll hear it. It'll just be intermittent, um, and then it just stops. See there, one way. Yeah, it's dark blue like your shirt. And uh, anyway, I got the gyros in the boat, and it was a big deal. It was a big deal to get them in there, and I'd never done it before like that. And I got them all spooled up, or got them all put back together. Was turning them on. And making these noises, and I was just like, oh man, no. That's so much take apart and put back together. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I call them up and say, look at what I got, this is what I got. I've never heard this before. Well, that was back, Seakeeper was still a really new company too, so, you know, we, you know, they knew, but they knew exactly what I was talking about. I said, don't worry about it. So, okay. <laughs> you say so. Station, we're going to want to hold that position and stay in that position for 10 minutes with the gyro off and 10 minutes with the gyro on. And so we'll record the data and then the Apple will spit it out and it'll tell me, well, I have to do some other work with it, but it'll tell me what, you know, like, oh, you got 80% or oh, you got 85% or whatever that number might be. Hopefully it's up there. Does it stabilize, does it passively stabilize if the rams are up just by sitting there spinning? No. 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 You can go out there and roll the boat all you want right now, Rob. It won't do anything. Huh. We'll call this a refit, although it's so good it could be considered a production installation. But we're going to have to call it a refit, right? <laughs> okay. Come on. 220. Uh, 20 amp. DC is 24. 10 amp. Pump manufacturer MP. Jim. Oh, cool. So he's gonna swing by and get rip on him. That was caulked, right? Yeah, it whistle? Yeah. We're not gonna publicize this, but not all of these, this, the 16's the noisiest for oh, some really? reason. But this is not. That's right, once they're like, say, everything's going then. Yeah, no. Nah. I convert the 220 to 400 volts. Yeah. You say in the other box was like as big as that, or the original one. Uh, half the size. Half. Yeah. 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 So that's modern, modern technology for you. And there's your brake solenoid right there. That's what's, that's what's controlling the hydraulics coming in and out. So that black one's a button or the silver one. Uh, this whole, this whole assembly here. This is the brake manifold. This okay. is. This is the valve. This is the main valve that's letting power, yeah. letting flow go to these two um, check valves oh, down okay. here. 
Oh, uh, so it goes one way or the other. Yep. Cool. Jimmy, you're ready. That's fucking Shit, crazy. That's instantaneous. <laughs> I've heard it as one of the guys, uh, one of my good buddy's sons building a, a 36 foot Everglades in San Diego, put I mean, in Florida, and they're putting one in. They built the most of the Yeah, we put So the test procedure is turn the boat sideways to the waves, which if you drift, Yeah, it just it's bucking, but it's not going sideways. Right. It's actually a perfect day. To do. Yeah, it is. A lot of times we'll go out. It's dead calm. Sorry, sorry. Like, no, we went a little way. Yeah. So what's doing that one is it's just, that's its last input. It'll, once it gets a roll, see right now there's the boat, see there it's got a little yeah. roll. Oh, it's huge. <laughs> I know. 
Yeah, it'd be far as about to fall over. Yeah, oh, we're getting rocks still on the boat, okay. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, yeah. And luckily. That was actually pretty good. Yeah, we might do. Install steps. Mike took out his water meter, flow meter. Now we're gonna put the covers on. It's still winding down, spooling down. Covers are on. Huh? The covers are on. Now the boat's going back together. We're gonna glue down the hatch with special sealant. Then the new teak deck, artificial Ooh. teak coming. <laughs> 